Paris qui résonnait partout en plein
Charles Wills. He's a reporter for the Stars and Stripes. This is my father. How do you do, sir? Well, reporter, we don't need a reporter. We need a bartender. Oh, 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 oh. I'm quite here because it seems to be the only place in town where you can get a drink. And do you know that all these people came to precisely the same conclusion? made me very proud. We couldn't tell you the good news before, but Helen has been expelled from the university. What? If we're going to have a scene, I'd ask this young man to leave or introduce this. Marion, please. Helen. Oh, now look, let her alone. After all, I was expelled from Harvard, wasn't I? Why shouldn't a girl follow in her father's footsteps? Excuse me a moment. I'll talk to you later. I have a feeling she'll be talking to me, too. Hey. Man, please. Oh, Charlie something or other. He uh, says he's a bartender. For the director of Oh, yes. Charlie what? The uh, Wills. I wish I were a bartender, a nice civilian bartender. You sure for your for champagne? Oh, no. Yes, you. See, you know about the woman's accent. I told him we knew each other. Well, we do in a way. We're only kissing an hour ago. Wait, where? Well? Oh, see now. You were one of the ones at the Ritz Bar. Etoile? Platte Vendôme. I know. Near the Dingo Cafe. You do remember. <laughs> no. It's the only other place I ran into more uniforms today. <laughs> Are you rich? No. Does that finish me off? No, but it does slow us up a little. <laughs> We're not rich either. We just live that way. Daddy says it's the same thing, only it's much cheaper. I think I like him. That's good. Because he'll try to borrow money from you, and I don't want him to be disappointed. I like the way you kiss him. I'm afraid I've underestimated the alcoholic capacity of our guests. I'll only be a few minutes. Get the bartender here to help you with it. <laughs> Wills. Wills. Are you one of the wealthy Willses from Maryland? <laughs> no. This way, Lieutenant. Thank you. Where are you from? Milwaukee. Would you help me? Sure. Uh, good beer, women with lovely legs, and practically no millionaires. <laughs> and you? New York till I was 12. Then Daddy moved us to Paris. When the Germans came in 1940, I was in school in Switzerland. That's where the loot's kept. No. Oh. Daddy put it there so the Germans wouldn't drink it. Very resourceful man. A lot of fun. That's his 11th commandment, having fun. Especially now. He says that after a war, but he should always be gay and have fun. Isn't your father a little old for this war? Oh, he wasn't in this one. He was in the 1918 war, and he's been celebrating ever since. Now that the war in Europe is over, what are you going to do? Try to stay out of the war in the Pacific. That's very sensible. That ought to be enough to tame the tiger. Charles, I was wondering what happened to you. Nothing. Yes. Everybody's waiting to meet you. Well, I've really got, got to report back to the paper for some sort of story. Oh, can't you stay just a few minutes? I'm sorry, I've got a deadline. Oh, Lieutenant, don't take the party with you. Oh. 
That's a nice laugh. Do you think someday soon you might be rich? Could you come back later? All right, I'll try. Uh, better yet, I'll meet you. You call and tell me where. All right. Hello? Who is this, please? Who? Oh, Helen. This is Charlie Wills. No, no, Charlie, the bartender. The army bartender? That's right. Could you give Marion a message, please? Tell that the lights of Paris go on tonight for the first time since the war began. Well, she wanted to meet me. And the Arc de Triomphe, right by the shrine for the unknown soldier. Thank you. Every day is the last day. I 
Wouldn't that be nice? A lifetime full of last days. Except it never really would be last days. You're too serious. Make that nice. I don't care if you're not rich. Yes, he did. He's trying to make time with me. <laughs> what is it, Alice? How did it end? And you shall not go unrewarded, my boy. Come to think of it, your generosity shall be repaid this very day. Now, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Look, uh, meat, eggs. About the powdered eggs. You see, they look something like Never eggs. Never mind, we'll cook them in sherry. That'll make them taste like oh, eggs. Please, I wish to make some small token of appreciation. Charles, my boy. A golden opportunity awaits us. Now, the question is, are we equal to the challenge? Well, what is it, sir? Benedictine in the fourth race today. He'll go to the post at ten to one. At a mile and three eighths, he can't lose. Why not? Um, it's a trade secret. Daddy means he has a hot tip, right? Another hot tip? Look, we have less than two hours to become wealthy. I think I can come along. I'll make a phone call. Excellent. Now, if we pool our resources, uh, what is your capital, my boy? About $40. Let's see. That means if we pool our resources, we have $40. What a pity. Maybe I can borrow some. Don't you do it, Charles. He'll keep you as broke as he is. Opportunity, my dear, is concerned with the future, not the past. Now look. If it's collateral you're worrying about, I happen to own oil leases in Texas that are worth, uh, well, you know, Texas. Oh, Daddy. The oil leases are a family joke. Plenty of leases, but not one drop of oil. Charlie. What? I feel lucky today. I'll see what I can dig up. I have the utmost confidence in the courage and ingenuity of the United States Army. To horse, my boy, to horse. Destiny hates a laggard. The paper said the Don't be nervous. Daddy's really very pretty. Well, what could possibly make me nervous? If we lose the race, I'll owe half a year's pay. The money belongs to four captains who fought their way out of best start with their bare hands. We won't lose. Well. Did you bet it all? Every penny, and at 12 to 1. Why did the odds go up? The suckers think that Benedictine will lose. What can you expect of agnostic, my boy? Over this way, huh? Which one is Benedictine? Uh, number four. He lay back for the first half mile. He looks scrawny. Lean, my boy, lean and ready and fit. Who gave you this tip? Benedictine, running beautifully. Where is he? Six, in perfect position. I new dress is my share of the winning. Benedictine! 
team won. Why should that surprise you? Not so much surprise as relief. You know, at uh, 12 to 1, that makes your share. Maybe there's another race fixed today. Fixed? Fixed race, my boy? You mean this race wasn't fixed? You've been reading too many crime novels. <laughs> there was no hot tip either, was there? Well... You just picked a crazy long shot out of a hat. Intuition and experience, my boy. But we could have gotten killed. It's a wonderful way to make a living, isn't it? <laughs> A pall of black destruction and chaos still hangs over Hiroshima. Events are now moving swiftly. The president of the... Hey, hey Marie, you hear the news? First things first. It'll take more than one bomb, Dan, this caper. One will get you 20, it's over in a week. Will you cover 60 bucks for it? You got it. Don't do it. Bonnie just came from the office. Japan offered to surrender here. What? Where do we let the Emperor stay in his throne? When are we going home? Uh, Charlie, what's the dope on discharges? Well, if you start right now, you're already behind 10,000 other guys. I have to get right back to the office. Right. I tried to fool you. Don't ever fall if you can possibly come yourself. Don't ever leave if you can stay. Maybe we can make the late supper or something. Is it really over? The war. Because I want to buy you silk shoes. Silk socks. Silk shorts. Oh, darling. Well, I started over here. Stop the second. I must have lost it. We've got a special edition coming out. You better hurry. I'll get you a taxi uh, first. Taxi! Now you stop fussing about me. Will you... Will you wait for me? I think I'll go home early and give Daddy a shock. But in this rain. I may not be able to cook and to sew, but I really can find myself a taxi. <laughs> it's the first thing I learned at finishing school. Now you go on here. You're a girl after my own heart. Make no mistake about it. I'm after it, all right. in two weeks. Daddy's a pincher. Look out of uniform. Even then. It's my fault. I would have caught this anyway. 
I catch cold even from weather forecast. Thank you for the lovely flowers. Oh. What's the matter? I don't know. You look so pale and sweet and restless. Remember, the nest is right outside that door. Not that I'll call it. One thing I learned these last weeks. I love you. You loved me the first day. I did. You sure did. We should have told each other then. Look at all the headway we could have made. For the first time in my life, I wish I had lots of money. Oh, money. Daddy says it isn't what you have, it's what you owe. I don't even owe enough. And what are your prospects, Jimmy? Prospects? My old job on the news is 65 a week. Please. I'm only supposed to think beautiful little things. Stuart Potter, General Motors need a president. Paris office of the Europa News Service needs a reporter. It doesn't pay as much as a New York job. But you don't need money to have fun in Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been working on a book. I should get back to the Why States. Why can't you write your book here? Oh, Charlie, darling. Please marry me and let's stay here, please. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Isn't it a little crazy? Yes, it is crazy. If you had any sense, you'd walk right out that door and never see me or call me again. Maybe send back my umbrella and call it quick. But I have any sense. No sense at all. You have no sense. I have a one degree temperature. I'm ninety eight point six. This would never happen. Me, but uh, I'm rather enjoying playing the anxious father. After all, it's Helen's first marriage, you know. Only marriage, sir. Tut, tut. No arrogance, please. Helen tells me that you're a very serious-minded person. You know, both feet on the ground, hard-working, industrious. Well, I try to be, sir. I tell you frankly, these are not the qualities I'd hope for in a son-in-law. I'll uh, go even further. They're uh, not the qualities to make Helen happy. Oh. Uh, well, sir, I, uh, I'm going to work in a Paris news agency. I'll be surrounded by carefree, irresponsible characters. Some of it's bound to rub off on me. Hmm. Well, let us hope so. Tell me, do I, uh, do I strike you as being an unusual father? You certainly do. It's a very straightforward answer. Try to overcome this tendency. You understand, of course, that I can't afford to give you a wedding. I don't care for one, thanks. Care for a drink? Oh, yes, I'd love one, thank you. That's too bad. You know, I'm getting a little low on this stuff and I was... Oh, that's all right. Here you are. Thank you. Do you know what you're getting for wedding presents? Well, Alan told me what not to expect. My dear sir, you're getting the old family joke. 4,000 acres of invaluable oil land. Thank you very much, sir. Not at all. You know, after all, it's not bad being an oil baron even if there's no oil. <laughs> Did you give Helen your permission? I had to give her my permission. Huh? Claude has asked me to be the mother of his children. Really? That, that, that seems a bit irregular, doesn't it? Dad, Claude has asked her to marry him. Oh. Well. Then I suppose I must kiss you. You uh, say best wishes to the bride or congratulations to the groom. Oh, which way is it? I've forgotten. You just go ahead and kiss each other. What 
did you put into that kid? Why don't you come here and find out? Helen getting married. Marion getting married. Father abandoned in middle age. <laughs> what man could ask for more? Give me a rewrite of that, will you? How you feeling? Pretty good. Good, good. That, that beard looks good. Oh, Charlie, if you're getting around and asking for money, not a chance. I haven't got a prank. If I had any, I wouldn't give it to you anyway. The prices aren't going up here like in the States. You know, the wife... Fellas, please. I got a wife and baby waiting in the hospital. I need 500 bucks to get them out of heart. Why don't you leave them there? It's the healthiest place in town. Uh, you can make jokes. You're not a father. Oh, I don't know. All well, the returns aren't in yet. How about it, Your Highness? Nothing like a hot tub after a long day of horror. Ah, there she is. <laughs> Look at those legs. Will your regular man give us? Forgive me, Highness. This is not the following to zero. I beg you to do this. What can you expect from the common herd, my lady? Eh? Oh, merci, Monsieur Ezwick. Je vais te chérie à vieux bébé maintenant. Oh! No. Well, I have good news. Fine, fine. Where's Helen? Charlie? Oh, oh how's Marion? She's fine. Why, it's fine. Fine. Are you fat, Joe? Fat, so is right. Look at me. Bulging out of my own clothes. I happen to be insane about each and every bulge. Where's Vicky? Being bathed. I just can't help it. You look so pretty to me. Of course, I've been looking at my editor all day. <laughs> oh, did you hit him for the bonus? Mm-hmm. I got it, too. Only it's not a bonus, it's a loan. And I sent it right out to the hospital. So you can tell your daughter to come out now. She's all paid for. I'll never, never be a size 10 again. Vicky will be exactly like you. Then I'll be surrounded by beautiful women. <laughs> that compliment and a martini would just about square you for putting me in jail for nine months. Mm, martini coming right out. Charles. Yes, Claude. I was appointed to the prosecutor's staff today. Well, what about your private practice? But this is more important. There are many collaborators who must be brought to justice. Sure. And the lawyers who defend them will get rich and you'll get convictions and be broke. ta -da! Gentlemen, the Queen. <sighs> Hello, Highness. <laughs> well, what happened to her hair? She had some yesterday. Wishful thinking, that's all. <laughs> you know, she's not bad for a first try. You better be beautiful. A genius is terribly rich. The beauty she got from my daughter. The genius she inherited from me. You better get busy with your contribution, my boy. The last nine months I've devoted to you. Now I'm going to have fun. What do you say, sweetheart? Whee! <laughs> <laughs> no guts, eh? wondering if you could have, uh, Thank you. I, uh, trust you're keeping a record of these loans, huh? Good night. Come along. You hate me for not holding your hand while you have your baby. If 
you held my hand, the next thing I'd hold yours, and the next thing I'd kiss you, and the next thing I'd... Oh, I'd like that. You're a glutton. Not to go I can finish this thing tonight. Please, it's not a thing. It's a great American novel. Julie, will you still worship me when you're famous? Five years since the end of World War II. Veterans everywhere pray that peace will come with a new year. Somebody would want to publish it. My boy, you're not in the least peculiar. You're merely naive. Now, I knew a publisher once, and he made it a rule never to read a manuscript. Oh, he'd smell it and weigh it and feel its taste and could read it. No. No. If this manuscript smelled and weighed and felt and tasted like garbage, then he published it. Would you like to know the secret of success? Mediocrity, my boy. Be a rich writer, you've got to remember your three R's. Riches, ruffians,
Saturday evening post bought my cereal. Fifteen thousand bucks. Oh, How yeah. about Good boy. Hey, hey. 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 Uh, uh, uh. Farewell, Hacks. For uh, $15,000. Hacks free, too. You could have at least thrown a party for everybody. Merci beaucoup. Charlie, uh, run down to the police station, will you? Before. They're holding some crazy American dame. Seems she held up traffic by taking a dive into a fountain at noon today. Not much of a story, is it? No, well, you know how Americans in Paris love to read about Americans in Paris. All right, what's the name? Tell them well. <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> Now he's acting as if you didn't know me. I'm your wife. Sickness and health and dry nose and death. You know how you are with colds. You better go home and change. We can't go home. They give us a dingo. Again? Isn't she better off in a nice, respectable bistro than all alone at home? It's going to get in the papers? One more crazy American jumping into one more beautiful fountain. That isn't news anymore. Is that why you did it? To get into print? I guess it was silly and stupid, but it was fun. Was it? Well, almost fun. On the verge of being fun. Only it never is quite, is it? No. Somehow it never is. I don't know why. Maybe it's something about Paris or me or the Times or something. It's as if you've got to hurry up. Hurry before... It's like you're trying to find out something terribly important, Tony. Only you never do. Oh, come on now. You always laughed at these things. It took a little time, but you laughed. It isn't that. Campbell just sold a cereal in the Saturday Evening Post for $15,000. And you hate him for it? Oh, darling, I think that's wonderfully human of you. <laughs> Fine. What are you running for office or something? Oh, you know me, always good for a couple of rides. Good thing to make people laugh. Don't I get anything? I pay the fine to get her out of jail. Why, you, my dear, I'm going to give you a Please, don't be messy. Like this. You all right? I'm 
Sorry. Say something nice. It's swell, kid. Great. The boss wants me on an interview with the Royal France. Hey, I can't handle it. Got a heavy date. Cover for me, will you? The, the woman's name is Lorraine Quall. Who's Lorraine Quall? Cafe Society. So long, kid. You got a great act there. Great. All it needs is a finish. Oh, you've got the right finish, haven't you, sweetheart? Right into my arms. <laughs> Mr. Wills. This is Paul. I am Wills from the Europa News Service. I need to be laid on some. Then I need a drink. Leon. You say, Mrs. Squire? Please. You can skip the usual. Paris is beautiful. American women love French men. French men love American women. Prices are too high. I haven't picked out my next husband yet. Why is it about bartender? At least he has talent. You've been interviewed before. The last time, uh, an hour ago. She wasn't very young, nor very attractive. The interview was very, very short. You can take your time. A first trip to Paris? No, no, no. First divorce here, that's all. So why did you choose Paris? I get several sores in Reno, and I lose too much money in Las Vegas. According to our files, you were married four times. Three. The Normans don't count. Leon? Is something wrong? Is something right? <laughs> you, you really can't tell one of my marriages from another without a program. Husband number one. For love. Failure. Husband number two, for money. Failure, except for the money in the name Quarrel. <laughs> Husband number three, an almond. He forgot to tell me he already had a wife. Husband number four, a bullfighter. Four times the best. Haven't had a hit. Any children involved? No. And that's my only contribution to humanity. I told you I was a failure. Shouldn't you be writing this down? Oh, the interview stopped long ago. Thank you. I'm hungry. What about dinner? Uh, I'm not on an expense account. I'm just a struggling newspaper man. Oh, well, stop struggling. The dinner is on my poor husband. I change and I'll be right down. But what about... Please, Mr. Will. At home, my analyst charges $50 an hour to listen to me talk. Hello, Cloud. I'm glad to see you. How have you been? Fine. You look fine. How are you, Marion? Fine. You look fine. I'm fine, too. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, my sister-in-law, Mrs. Mateen. Mr. Mateen, Mrs. Paul. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. with the prosecutor's office. Oh? I hope we haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Quall just arrived in Paris. I'm uh, interviewing her. How's Helen? Fine. Fine. Oh, and you should see Vicky. She's... You know, we really should see more of each other. After all, family. Yeah. I'll get in touch with Helen in the morning. Good night, Mrs. Quall. Good night. Good night. Good night. Charles, I really would like to see you again. Good night. Good night, Paul. Good night. Is, now, what's one little wife among all your husbands? I imagine you'll catch it when you get home. From Helen? Not Helen. She's the most wonderful, most understanding. Do you mind if we don't go on with the interview? Somehow I'm suddenly cold sober. And it's awfully late. And if I don't get back to the office and do the story... Can I go with you? To the office, I mean. Why? I don't know. But we never see each other again, and I... I like to drag the night out a little. 
And I should see that story. Well, that office is awful cold and dingy at this hour of the morning. You'd be surprised how often I feel cold and dingy. I'll be simpatico. Good morning. Now what's the matter? Oh, Charlie, how could you? Don't Charlie me, sister. What about you? I'm sick and tired of you sitting around these crummy cafes day and night. The darling of every phony, petted by writers who don't write, adored by painters who don't paint. What do you write? Interviews with useless, sloppy women. At least I don't jump into fountains and lap up all the liquor in Paris. Well, why don't you ask me why I drink? Why I jump in the fountains? That's right. Blame me. Blame me. Did I want to stay in Paris? What right have you to criticize me? You're suspicious. You. Ah, that's a laugh. Now you just listen to me. Do you realize I've been out all night? Poor darling. Oh, I don't think it is cool. Well, don't you care where I've been? You look awful. Is it a job assignment? I was interviewing a woman. She was a rich, beautiful, exciting woman. She was interested in me. Well, don't you even care? What are you trying to say, Jack? I'm trying to say that I love you. What kind of a woman did you say she was? How many kinds are there? Was she really pretty? I'd lie about it, but Marion saw it too. Yes, she's very pretty. Marion? We ran into Claude and Marion. She'll probably try to build it up into something, but... Just how rich and how pretty was she? Oh, shut up. Hello? Marion? What? What? Say that again! It's a lie. You know how Marion has never liked me. I stopped by Marion's on my way home this morning and had breakfast with her and told her that. How much are we worth? Marion says that you said that we're stinking rich. Marion always editorializes. Money has no order. Oh, especially lots of it. Just the same? English, Becky, English. Are we many of theirs? Sanity. There's a wide streak of insanity in this family, Becky, on your mother's side. We have hit an oil gusher. We what? Oil, darling. It's about to put Texas on the map. You mean those worthless oil leases of ours? A generous wedding present from me, which I trust you will remember and keep in mind. How rich are we? Well, there's a state law about only pumping out 80 barrels a day. Now, at $2 a barrel, that's, uh, that's... It's only $160 a day. Seven days a week? 
course oil is an act of God. But that's eleven hundred dollars a week. And twenty-seven and a half percent tax free. What if we sold out? My thoughts exactly. A capital gain. But if we didn't sell out, we'd have an income for life. Is everybody from Milwaukee cautious? Sensible, just sensible. Well, we did raise everything from top to toe. Make you want to have my haircut. We'll take Marion's and we'll turn it into a riding room for you. Do you suppose we really could grow to fifty thousand dollars in a year? Well, we could try. We? Oh. You know what? Of course, we could build another well. Mary never said a word about running into you last night. Mama, what soil? <laughs> oh, Vicky. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No more deadlines, no more journalism. The job is dead. Lower away. Catch it! Hey! Hey! Now I'll finish my third novel. This one doesn't get published. It'll get published. I got no money worries. I got no job worries. What would I use for an excuse? You got enough money, no excuse isn't necessary. Good luck to you, Charlie. All good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, I should like to do more for charity. Oh, that's Helen. What's the little play? Six thousand for another kiss. I'm really worth much more, you know what? I never expected to see you at a charity. Neither did I. Something's wrong? Yeah. Did you? No. Charlie. He hasn't moved from his room all day. He's still there. He won't eat anything. He won't say anything. Just sits there in the dark, alone. Go away and let me alone. 
Please, I can't explain my failure to you. So be a good girl and let me alone. But you're not a failure, not to me. When I was 20, I used to think I would write great books. I would be able to do this because I was different. I wanted perfection, and that made me different. But I'm not 20 anymore, and it's too late now. I want to try again. No! I just don't have what it takes. All I need to do now is get used to the idea. I'm rich. Price of a few drinks I could buy fame and friends or something like them. Why spend years writing? I could hold court in some noisy bar and criticize writing and talk about writing and... You'll never make it, boy. Twenty-five bucks says I do. We've already got 75 bets. Make it a hundred. All right. A hundred. Sucker. Fuzzy shot. Fuzzy. Charlie. Oh, you want this, baby? Come on, Charlie. Oh, Holy Charlie. Ah, what am I here? Attention, il va te battre. Oh, non, Charlie. Attention, il va te battre. Holy shot. Fuzzy shot. Charlie. Hold it. Charlie, 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 Charlie,
I borrow a pair of cufflinks? I can't see them. <laughs> Both of you put your upper plates back here. You're making me self-conscious. Can I dance for you, Grandma? In the morning, my dear. That'll work out fine, because I should be getting in by then. Good night, darling. Bon nuit, Tellemont. Bon nuit. Milk, literature. What's the meaning of this? I'm supposed to be working. Your idea? It's a fine idea. Don't you corrupt him. I wouldn't think of it. But we will miss you at the Wilsons. Can you imagine throwing a white tie party simply because it's Thursday? Couldn't we go? Charlie. Really, it would be good for me. And tomorrow morning, I'll chain myself to that chair. Please. Why do I always end up saying yes when I really mean no? By the way, I'm bringing a friend. He's an international tennis bum. Oh. Now, don't worry about him at the Wilsons. He's invited everywhere. Come to think of it, that's uh, how he makes his living. You mean he gets paid for being a guest? Mm, no, no. He, he steals the silverware. Charming. Oh, my, uh, my daughter and Charles Wills, my son-in-law. How do you do? I'm uh, Shanti. I hear you played in Rome. I play all the tournaments. How do you make out? Brilliantly. Until the second round, then invariably some young Australian or American schoolboy beats me. But nobody beats him in jumping over the net and congratulating the winner. <laughs> I'm the champion, graceful loser. Forgive me, but... You're the lady in the fountain, the Café Dingo. Oh, it's my favorite painting. Whenever I'm in Paris, I go there to stare at it. Well, you're in luck. How are you going to stare at the original? Come with me, Paul. Until later. Sort of appealing, isn't it? What? Appealing. Yes, in a revolting sort of way. <laughs> oh, Chante. Most the old age. You're going to drive in this race yourself. Certainly. What do you get if you win? What do you get? You get to be winner. That's what you get. Well, what do you know? It's my wife. I your wife. All right, sporting blood, run along to the locker room. Come back in a few minutes, Paul. <laughs> Don't ease guilty conscience. It won't take long. Oh. Hey, what kind of a wife are you, dancing with other men? The average guy, the oh. What's with Mr. Tennis and you? Oh, we're Paul and Helen. Mmm. He's sweet and attentive. Doesn't think it's terrible at all that I'm married and have a seven-year-old daughter. Maybe he just wants to be mother. <laughs> Not exactly. He's made several suggestions. That was one. Well, let me know how he makes it. Lorraine! Lorraine Paul! You've forgotten me. <laughs> Believe me, the only thing I've forgotten about you is your name. Wills! You open new service. Charlie! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so good to have my arms around you again. Oh, you've got me confused with somebody else. We never got that far. Why not? You get married again? Of course. And I'm in Paris now to get rid of it. Mm. Are you still married? Yes, of course. To the same woman. To the same wonderful woman. I have to say that because she's standing right here. <laughs> May I present my wife, Helen? Mrs. Quall. Oh, it's Mrs. Johnson now. But not for long. 
How do you do? I'm not quite sure. You're much prettier than I expected. And you're much less beat up than you have a right to be. <laughs> Is it all right if I uh, come back now? Oh, Paul Lane, this will be a uh, temporary, Mrs. Johnson. The best mediocre tennis player in the world. I've seen you at on my hotel. Oh, I always stay at the Royal Frontier. Tennis, anyone? Yes. Well, we develop butterflies in our stomach, and milk seems to quiet them down. How do they get in your stomach? They usually hide in the bubbles of champagne. But it's a well-known fact of hydrodynamics. Good night, my dear. Is it Sunday already? What happened to Friday and Saturday? I'm Are you coming, Daddy? I'll meet you at the bar later. Church on Friday? What happens at church on Friday? The usual thing. Well, as long as you're in that sort of mood, can I expect a little sympathy for this head? Heads? Very little. What'd I do? That I'd be very interested to hear. Up to 103 miles an hour and then started back, right? All right. Then, then nothing. 
drop Lorraine at her hotel, or she dropped me at the house. I forget which. Sure, that's all you've forgotten? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but nothing happened last night. Tonight's another night. She'll be beautiful again. You'll be full of wine again. And nothing will happen again. Who took you home last night? That tennis player? He didn't exactly take me home. Oh. He asked me back to his hotel for night care. I went. Did you have to fight your way out? Well, there was a battle, all right. But it wasn't Paul I had to fight with. It was myself. Did you win? Now, you listen. I'm under the same strains and stress as you are. I live in Paris, too. And I'm bored, too. And all that time, I had a picture in my mind of you and that woman. And don't underestimate Paul. He's charming and attentive. And... and I'm so unhappy. Charlie, let's go home. All right, as soon as Vicky finishes with... I mean, really, home. America. Home. It won't work. Running home. Charlie, let's go back. Before we crack up. Please. If you love me, let's go back home. You used to say, let's live it up a little. You were right. There's lots of time to go home. Plenty of time for everything. Suppose time runs out on us. You're just having a bad day, darling. Tomorrow we'll... I've been having a bad day for a year now. Maybe I'm growing up. It's too late to grow up. I tell you what. Come racing with me. We'll go to Monte Carlo. Why is winning a race so important? Maybe I could do a short story about racing. Why not? All right, all right. I get a kick out of racing. It's fun. To quote your illustrious father, nothing is more important than fun. Does that make me sound stupid? Is that what you want me to say? Come with me, Helen. No, Jerry. Well, maybe I'll take somebody else. Wouldn't that be reasonable? You'll find a reason to make it reasonable. Look out for Vicky, will you? Where are you going? To do something important. Buy a new hat.
You can see that, can't you? Costa. I stay married and keep you on the side. And when I'm lonely, I... Oh, brother. Well, the idea wasn't invented just now. 
It's done all the time. Half your crowd have arrangements. Is that what you expected of me? Helen, listen. What's the matter with you? Suddenly I've got very cold feet. outside. He can't see her. I won't let him.
bridge. This is no way to get out of here. Claude. Good morning, Charles. 
I'm very happy to see you. Thanks. For everything, thanks. As soon as I got your telephone message, I went to school at Catholic. Look, Daddy, look. It's wonderful, as usual. Daddy, what? could we go to the bar? We move the railroad train. Well, I... Oh, please. Please. That was the very first thing I wanted to do when you came. You haven't got about an hour till Mario comes back. I'll wear my new coat. Okay. How is Miranda? She's fine. I want you to know, Claude, how much I appreciate... Oh, I didn't do anything. I showed Maria you met her. She couldn't stop you from seeing Vicky. I was hoping she'd let me have Vicky back. I've got to have her, Claude. I need her. Yes, I think she needs you, too. Thanks. Daddy! Daddy, hurry, Daddy! The hour's almost up! About your book. About Mary. If we are careful, it may be all right. You get back on that train. Daddy, may I sit out the next drive? Oh. I'm really getting too old for that sort of thing. <laughs> Don't you think so? Yes, you're real old. <laughs> Darling. Do you ever think of your mother? Oh, yes. Yeah. I don't want you to forget her. I have a picture of her in my room. Grandpa says I look like her. Do you think so, Daddy? Yes. Very much like her. That's lucky for me. Daddy, why don't I live with you? Why? Aren't you happy? Yes, but not perfectly happy. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I know what you mean. Then I can come and live with you? I don't know. I don't know. Don't you want me to? Of course, darling. Daddy, if you really love me, please let me come and live with you. Please. We'll see. Say yes, Daddy. It wasn't so hard to say yes, was it? Hello, Uncle Claude. From the Bois, we want your urn, eh? And we got something for you, Uncle Claude, and for Aunt Marion, and something for me, too. It's a wonderful store and a wonderful day. Oh, Aunt Marion! You want to see what we bought for you? It's a surprise. Look. You're late for your nap. 
put us out to date? Go on up to your room. Don't you want to see your present? Do as I say, please. Hello, Marion. Hello, Charles. It's good to see you again. I'm sorry about getting back so late with Ricky. Oh, well, she would have been too excited to sleep anyway. And it's very important. You've done a wonderful job with Vicky. She's grown up. How do you find Paris? Well, most of the old crowd is gone. Funny, I dropped in at the Dingo Bar this afternoon just to see how it looked. That wasn't a man I knew. I should think you've had enough of bars. As I wrote you, I take one drink every afternoon, but no more. And I take that drink deliberately. Just so the idea of taking a drink won't get too big. Of course, Charles. We understand. Sometimes I forget and don't take the drink. But, well, I went to the dingo. See how it looked. I went to a few other places, too. Places where uh, Helen and I... Look, Marion, I just can't keep on talking. I'm all tied up in knots. Marion, can I have the key back? very well to talk about one drink a day, but what guarantee have we that... Well, when I, I think of those wasted years... But I think about them, too. I'm working hard now, Marion. I've, I've got a contract for several short stories, and I, I'm starting on another book. My sister's coming from Milwaukee to, to keep house for me. I want Vicky. Please, Marion. If we wait much longer, I'll, I'll lose a childhood and, and my chance for a home. I, I just can't go, oh, sir. Don't you see? It'll be almost like having Helen back. Yeah. I can't help it. I'll never in my life be able to forget that morning when Helen soaked and, and shivering. You locked her out. Marion. But you want to remember one night. How long are you going to make me pay for that one night? What about those years Helen and I loved each other? I don't want to hear about it. Marion. You're not going to let me have Ricky? No. Marion. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm sorry, Charles. What will I do? We'll see. Thanks. I'll get dinner started. Mario. about it. He's not getting Vicky. Not now, not tomorrow, never. Why? Do you hate him that much? Yes. For what he did. Yes. Yes. It's 
true. He committed an unforgivable crime against you personally. He's guilty of never knowing you loved him. You found him, but he married Helen. Yes, he's guilty of that too. And being guilty, of course, he must be punished. Penalty? What would hurt him most? Take away what he loves most. This little girl. My poor darling. We can't have everything we want. Take me. I wanted all your love. I wanted our own child. A child out of our love, not out of your disappointment. I... I don't think Helen would have wanted you to be alone. Thank you.